Hi, this is William, and today we're going to talk about how to help your business succeed. So, working on the internet is one of the most difficult because only about 4% succeed, meaning 96% of the internet businesses fail. We work with hundreds of small business owners over the last few years, and we've heard all the excuses as well as the reasons why people start a business, but typically they come down to one of the three reasons listed below. Reason one, the most popular one, running away from a bad work situation with the belief they can do it much better themselves. Reason two, receiving a payout from an employer and buying a business which both sadly and frequently results in buying the lowest paid job of their career. Reason three, the most successful one, is running toward a long held dream. Regardless of your motivation, I doubt you're going into business with a desire for failure and I expect you might welcome seven steps that can enhance your chances for long term success. Step 1. <clears throat> Understand why most businesses fail to reach their full potential. Yes, there are a multitude of reasons and excuses why business owners fail to reach their full potential. The lack of competition, unfair landlords, and the competition via the internet. But the most two common real reasons are that the business owners are unclear about their goals or have lost sight of their original goals or business owners don't really know what's going on in their business. We're no longer surprised by business owners who draw a blank when we ask them why they are in business. When we speak with them, they start to remember their original reason for starting their business. For example, a better lifestyle is one of the more popular reasons, but often it's hard to believe when we see them working long hours for little return and often feeling trapped on the deck of a sinking ship. Not knowing what's going on in their business is also extremely common and relates to knowing your key performance indicators such as how many people you have to connect with to get the right percentage to walk through your door and the right percentage of those to purchase and the right percentage of those who purchase to become loyal clients <coughs> as well as referrers of others to your business or acceptable reject rates for manufacturing and managing against these. Step 2. Know your business. This may sound strange but in reality you must always know where you are at in your business. You have to be able to identify your strengths and weaknesses. You have to know when you require assistance and have the courage to ask for advice. You have to know how much money you have and how long it will last. In other words, you have to be constantly aware of your current status rather than getting lost in rose-colored glasses view of how you believe your world should be. Step 3. Know where you're going. As stated above, many small business owners are in business as a result of habit rather than on a clearly defined journey towards a destination of their choice. Can you imagine a potential Super Bowl quarterback who approaches the sport with the idea of, okay, if I turn up training a few times a week, I might win a Super Bowl. And we all know an athlete requires far greater dedication to achieve a Super Bowl, and so do you, if you're going to be successful in your own enterprise. Having said this, however, it's important to realize the size of attaining your Super Bowl may seem overwhelming, so you have to break down the big picture into manageable chunks so you can see how far you've come. You must set goals that are achievable. Step 4. Decide how much you want to make. Yes, I did say it correctly. Decide how much you want to make and think about what you, think about what you might look for financially when considering purchasing or starting a business. For most of the world, to, this would be the ability for the business to pay its bills, pay wages, and generate profits to grow the business. It's interesting then to consider why many startups and those in small business believe they're only entitled to what's left over rather than earning a realistic income from their business. Working with clients, we help them create a predictive budget and cash flow, provide wages for the owners, and create profits for which to grow their respective businesses. This latter point is crucial for success. After all, if you don't plan to create a profit for growth, how is your growth going to be funded? Step 5. Tell the world. Okay, so we know where we are, know where we are headed, and have decided our, our income. All we have to do now is get customers buying our products or services. But who are these people and where are we going to find them? Sadly, many clients work on the field of dreams basis. Build it and they will come. And while there's much truth in the belief, the reality usually requires that they show up a lot faster than your money will allow you to wait. Marketing is a big topic in its own right, so we're not going into a great depth here other than to highlight some of the key ingredients to be considered before launching into websites or advertising. It's important to remember an overall marketing strategy has to combine your decisions about who the people are that are most likely to buy, what you have to offer, what these potential customers expect about the quality, service, and price relating to your offering, 
and how and where you can most appropriately communicate with your target audience and marketing messages are important for them to hear. Step six, <coughs> everybody manages to seed. I can hear many of you saying, but in truth, most business owners are we see are too busy managing to avoid failure rather than managing for success. So what's the difference? Managing to avoid failure involves knee-jerk reaction to financial pressures and our people dramas, whereas managing for success relates to constantly knowing what has to happen in your business, analyzing constantly and tweaking the bits that are not working effectively. Obviously, specific aspects of what it applies to each business varies. However, there are some common elements of successful businesses that are worth emulating like having clear policies, procedures, operating systems, providing right and effective training to your staff while managing your business around them. Step 7. Get a coach or a mentor or both. One of the biggest differences between the football player who succeeds and the one who doesn't even make it into the game is often the difference in quality of his or her coach or mentor. The coach mentor is outside of the day-to-day -day activity and can provide a cool outsider's perspective about what needs to be done and can bring into the table ideas and concepts outside the athlete's awareness or current level of experience. The same is true for business. When selecting a coach or mentor, it's important to be sure you choose the right one. Remember, they are there to help you rather than to sell you a coaching system designed to make them money. So ask questions about their specific expertise in business. Ask for names of other businesses in the industry so you can get a reference check them. Check their availability in relation to responding to problems or issues you may encounter. And finally, determine what is and what is not included in their fee structure. Even as a coach and mentor myself, I regularly work with others to advise and assist me on a variety of aspects about my business, and in fact, owe many successes to their timely and sage advice. So in short, if you prefer a successful business rather than digging in the dirt in the lowest paid and most frustrating job of your career, I urge you to take care of these seven steps and wish you all the success. And that concludes the presentation on how to help your business succeed video. And we'll, this is William, and we'll see you the next time.